All right, why don't we begin? So welcome to the Explore East Asian Area Studies webinar. Um, we'd like to begin by introducing the East Asian Studies Center team. My name is Grace Rue, I'm the Associate Director and the Graduate Advisor for the Master's Program in East Asian Area Studies. Along with me, uh, we have here today, Alex Loriaga, who is our Program Specialist and our amazing Undergraduate Advisor. And she will present on the bulk of the webinar today about the major, minor, and the requirements. We also have Jasmine Yu, our program officer and our media guru, and she will begin with an overview of the agenda. Thanks. Awesome. All right. So hi, everyone. We do have a packed session this evening, so I'll go over the agenda really quickly. Um, so we'll first give you an overview of EASC, um, our contact information, where we're located on campus, and then we'll talk about all the events we'll be hosting this semester. Uh, we'll then go over the East Asian Area Studies major and minors, uh, additional programs that we offer, and our Global East Asia Maymester Study Abroad program. Uh, we'll also review the other uh, East Asia related centers on campus that are available to you as well. Um, um, also the different funding opportunities that we provide our students or can help you find. So please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A box, or you can ask them at the end of the presentation by using the raise hand function and we'll allow you to ask your question then. Okay, so let's get started. So under normal circumstances, this is where you would find us. EASC is located in the College Academic Services Building, which is the white building on the corner of Truesdale and West 34th Street. So you've probably passed us on the way to the USC Village. Um, so as soon as you, we, we can return to campus, uh, please feel free to pop in and say hello. Our mailing address is on the slide. Um, as well as the best email to contact us if you have any questions about EASC. So this email, EASC at USC.edu, only goes to Grace, Alex, and I. So if you um, do email us, one of us will respond as soon as we can. Our undergraduate advisor, Alex Iloriaga's email is also provided on the slide um, right here. Um, and she'll discuss everything you need to know about our major and minors shortly. Uh, but before she does, I do want to bring your attention to some of our upcoming events this semester. So all EASC events will be hosted entirely online. Um, if you go on our upcoming events page on our website, we list all of our events. So if you are interested in attending, um, just make sure to RSVP for the event and you'll receive the Zoom meeting link. And we launched three new series um, this year under our new EASC director, uh, Sonia Lee, who is also a professor of art history, religion, and East Asian languages and cultures. Um, so these series allow USC faculty to invite a guest speaker um, to join them for a virtual conversation. And we already have a few talks scheduled around our first series called Race and Solidarity, Trans-Pacific Conversations. So for our first talk, uh, USC professor Duncan Williams has invited Professor Yuichiro Onishi from the University of Minnesota um, to delve into today's Afro-Asian alliance regarding the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, professor Onishi actually just published a recent essay titled um, A Politics of Our Time, Reworking Afro-Asian Solidarity in the Wake of George Floyd's Killing. It's a really powerful essay um, and it's linked on the event page. So you know, right off the bat, this event will be on October 6th, and there will be a lot more um, interesting and relevant conversations in this series as well. Um, we also have a series called Regulatory Science, East Asian Perspectives, which will cover topics on health and wellness that are um, relevant today. So our first talk in this series will be focused on drugs and COVID times with um, two USC faculty members from the Health Sciences Campus. Um, we will also have a series um, called the Guest Speaker Series. And we actually have several talks planned already for the fall. So similar to the previous two, um, USC faculty will invite a guest speaker to speak in conjunction with one of their courses this semester. So this is a great way to, you know, kind of peek inside their classroom and see how their class is like and what they're discussing. Um, and then our Global East Asia virtual info session is on October 1st, and Alex will talk more about that later. 
Uh, we will also have a virtual booth at the Fall 2020 Virtual Graduate, uh, Graduate School Fair on October 22nd. And depending on how the spring semester looks like, we will host our annual East Asia Career Panel, either, on, um, either in person or online. Uh, our career panel is our main networking opportunity for our undergraduate students. So I highly encourage you all to attend, whether it is in person or online. Uh, we invite back EASC alumni to you know, talk about how they utilize their East Asian area studies language and knowledge in their careers. So it's a hit every year, um, and a lot of our students are actually able to find opportunities through this panel. Um, so yeah, again, this is all listed on our upcoming events page, so um, make sure you register through there. And now I'll hand it off to Alex, our undergraduate advisor. Thanks, Jasmine. So as mentioned, I am the undergraduate advisor for the East Asian Studies Center's major and minors. I'm gonna go over the academic programs the center uh, offers so feel free to you know, ask any questions that you have in the uh, Q&A section or we'll answer them at the end. Uh, we're gonna start off with the East Asian Area Studies major. This is an interdisciplinary major that allows students to learn more about East Asia through the lens of various disciplines and craft a major that matches their academic interests and passions. The EAAS major requires two years or four semesters proficiency in either Chinese, Japanese, or Korean language. Students are welcome to take any, uh, take language beyond this level if they choose, but the major requires at least Japanese, Chinese, Japanese, or Korean four. For lower division requirements, EAAS majors take EASC 150 East Asian Societies to build a foundation of East Asian area studies and interdisciplinary study and analysis. This GE course is offered every fall and counts towards the GEC social analysis and GEH traditions and historical foundations GE requirements. The second lower division course can be any other non-language East, non East Asia related lower division course. Now on average, USC offers about 80 East Asia related courses in about 20 departments each year. To help students identify the options available, EASC compiles a list of courses and posts them on our website. If you go to our website, which you could just Google EASC, and we're one of the very first listings, if not the first listing, under academics, you can click on courses and you'll see a, a list of courses we've identified in the schedule of classes as being East Asia related. This is a quick snapshot of the courses page on our website. And these links will take you to that spreadsheet that I mentioned, it lists each of the courses. When we plot out what courses you're interested in taking, this is where we go in the meeting. In addition to the lower division requirements, East Asian Area Cities majors must take seven upper division courses while meeting three requirements. One of those courses needs to be from the history department. You'll also need to take country specific courses, think history of China, Japanese foreign policy, Korean culture from ancient to modern times on at least two different countries. And then finally, those seven courses need to come from at least three different departments or schools that you know, interdisciplinary portion I mentioned earlier. Because this major offers so much flexibility, students can really customize the major to explore the various facets of East Asia that mean most to them. We don't have officially named tracks, but our majors can focus on our history, cinema, communication, political science, and more based on the courses that they choose while they're completing the major. If learning more about the region also means learning more of the language beyond second year proficiency, you can still do that as upper division language courses in Chinese, Japanese, or in Korean also count towards those upper division requirements for the major and the minors that I'm about to talk about. Of the 128 units you have to take to complete your undergraduate degree at USC, the East Asian Area Studies major requires only about 36 to 52 units. And that translates to about nine to 13 classes, depending on your language proficiency by the time you start. This, plus the fact that students can often double count one or two courses between majors is why most of our majors either double major or have a major minor combination while they're at USC. Now, Let's say that you're interested in learning more about East Asia, but you just don't have time for another major or you're looking for a minor. The East Asian Study Center offers two minors. 
The first is the East Asian Area Studies minor, and you'll see that it looks just like the EAS major, but scaled down a bit. You still take two lower division courses, EAS D150 and another lower division East Asia related course. But now you take only four upper division courses, one from the history department, one in the humanities, and this could be art history, comparative literature, EALC. There's a whole list of departments on our website that fall under this category. And again, country specific courses on at least two different countries. You will notice that neither of the minors on this slide require language, but upper division language courses, so advanced one and above, will still count towards the upper division requirements. Now, if your focus is entirely on Korea, you can opt for the Korean studies minor. You would take only one lower division course, but of your upper division courses, all of them must focus on Korea. So East Asia region courses wouldn't count here. Both minors are great for students planning on studying abroad as you can complete most of your requirements in one semester. So I do wanna take a quick pause here just to see if anyone has any questions about the East Asian Area Studies major or the minors that we've covered. Um, if you can just go ahead and enter it into the Q&A section um, or you can also raise your hand and we can um, actually allow you to um, ask your question verbally. All right, well, we are gonna move on and we'll have plenty of chances for um, people to ask questions a little bit later in the, slide, in the presentation as well. So beyond the major and minors, we offer academic programs for students who want to incorporate research into their undergraduate experience or who are thinking about graduate study. The first is the East Asian Area Studies Honors Program. This is an optional track for EAS majors to conduct research and write a thesis um, under the guidance of one of EASD's 120 or so affiliated faculty members. Students who apply for this during their second semester of their sophomore year through their junior year will conduct research and write a thesis over the course of a year. You will, students who complete this will also receive special distinction upon graduation. Now, if you know you want to look into East Asian Area Studies for graduate study, make sure to look at the Progressive Degree Program. Beginning this year, USC students can apply in their junior year to pursue the Progressive MA degree. You could complete both your undergraduate degree and an MA in as little as five years without taking the GRE, and you'll take some of your graduate coursework during your senior year. There is a pretty strict unit range uh, when students can apply. That's usually about 64 to 96 units. Uh, but typically this means that juniors can apply for this program. If you're a little bit outside that range because of AP or you know, transfer credit, make sure to you know, get in contact with us because there are some rules around how that 64 to 96 units is calculated. If you do wanna learn more about this program or the East Asian Area Studies program, please make sure to email me um, and we can set up a time to meet. Now, if you're interested in the East Asian Area Studies MA, but the progressive degree isn't the right fit for you, there is the Master of Arts in East Asian Area Studies program. Grace Rue, we met earlier, is our amazing graduate advisor for the program. And she's also available to talk about this. Uh, we do wanna highlight that USC students and alumni are eligible for a waiver for the $90 application fee. So if you decide to apply, make sure you take advantage of that perk. If you have questions about the MA requirements or the program itself, we included Grace's direct email at the bottom of this slide. But if you have questions about the application process or any other like kind of technical questions, it's best to reach out to EASD at USC.edu so that any of the three of us could respond. Now, while you're studying East Asia, we highly encourage you to study abroad. Students can study abroad in East Asia for a semester or a year through overseas studies, but the East Asian Studies Center also offers four-week May Master programs in China, Tokyo, and Kyoto. EASC 360, or Global East Asia, is an upper division course offered in the spring semester, but it occurs from mid-May, right after commencement, to mid-June, with two weeks of travel in the country of study while you conduct independent research in a small cohort of USC students. There's no major or language requirements, so this is an excellent way to travel, conduct research, and learn more about China or Japan. We have an information session coming up on October 1st, where we'll cover the application process, course information, 
and we'll also provide an update on what the plans are around the semester programs for this year. Now, I'm going to hand it off to Grace, who's going to share some more information about resources and opportunities available outside of EASD. Thank you, Alex. Uh, next slide. Thank you. So if, as Alex mentioned, if you Google EASC, we're the first few links that pop up. Um, so please go ahead and explore our website since we update it on a regular basis and it has um, a wealth of information on anything related to China, Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia and South Asia, hopefully, um, at USC. And um, we are very fortunate at USC to have many resources outside of just our center that focuses on East Asia. We have a dedicated library at USC. Um, it's called the East Asian Library. And in the library, we have dedicated experts on Chinese, Japanese, and Korean resources. So um, if you want to, any Korean drama or movie that you wanna see, we should actually have that at the East Asian Library. Um, so please go ahead and search that website and reach out to the librarians if you have any questions about resources that you'd like to explore. Um, in addition to the East Asian Study Center, we also have dedicated country-specific institutes at USC that um, focus on Asia. So, for example, the Ito Center for Japanese Religious and Cultures focuses on Japan. We have the Korean Studies Institute, which has a program for undergraduates called the KSI Fellows. Um, this is done in partnership with the University of Michigan Korean Studies Center, and they uh, alternate hosting undergraduate conferences for students to present research papers. So it's a wonderful uh, experience and opportunity and something you could put on your resume in the future. We also have the U.S. China Institute. This is housed under the School of uh, Annenberg School of Communications and Journalism. Under the U.S. China Institute, they have um, student led magazine called US China Today. And you can have some experience writing articles for publication through this um, program. So please go ahead and explore all of these opportunities. If you would like us to connect you with, with somebody at these institutes as well, please feel free to reach out to us at easc at usc.edu. Um, next slide, please. So in addition to these resources, USC also offers an extensive support network for, of advisors for students who want to apply for competitive external funding opportunities. The Office of Academic Honors and Fellowship is a great resource for all students, both undergrad and even at a master's level. So for example, um, you might, may have heard of some of these scholarships like the Gilman Scholarship or Luce for uh, study abroad, or the Fulbright Research um, Program, as well, well as the Schwartzman Scholars Program, which is a fully funded paid program, um, a graduate program located in China. You can also apply for language programs that are completely fully funded, supported by the State Department or another federal agency, such as the Boren and the Critical Language Scholarship Programs. So the Academic Honors and Fellowships Office provides support for student, USC students who want to apply for these competitive scholarships, usually a year in advance prep. So please go ahead and reach out to them and set up an appointment with the advisors there. In addition to these resources, EASC regularly updates our funding and internship calendar. And if you go to the link there, you'll find many resources about internship opportunities, scholarship opportunities, call for proposals to participate in conferences, um, and even job opportunities for students with a focus on Asia. Um, I know, for example, there's a, a, a upcoming conference on K-pop, um, that's organized by Cal State. So for example, you can have the, find those sorts of opportunities through that website. And I think, is that the final slide? Yes, mm -hmm. if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us now. And if you guys would like, you can actually go ahead on your screen at the bottom, there should be a little section where it says you can raise hand. If you'd like, we can actually have it so that if you raise hand, we can, um, kind of unmute you to, to say so that you could actually ask your question if you'd rather say it than type it. Okay, so actually a question we have been um, 
getting a lot is about our Global East Asia May Master programs and when the deadline the when the deadline is to apply. So we'll go over all the details and updates at our info session. So definitely save the date, October 1st. Um, but the deadline to apply for the Global East Asia program is um, October 30th by 5 p.m. And with our Global East Asia program, um, if you are a Dornsife student, you are eligible to apply for SOAR funding, uh, which awards up to $1,000 in funding. So that is actually something that we help our students apply for and get. Any other questions? Okay. I think that's well, the last of the questions. Yeah. Uh, well, if you do have any questions, you know, please feel free to email us. Again, our email address is very simple. It is easc at usc.edu. Um, and again, that only goes to Grace, Alex, and I. So any questions you have about anything, anything EASC related, just shoot us an email and we'll respond as soon as we can. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye, take care.